Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV Spam at 9. Nagaland Chief Minister Nipiru has said it is a matter of great satisfaction that on September 14, 2022, the Naga political group signed the September Joint Accord. Accordant under the in initiative of the Forum for Naga Reconciliation, the NSCNIM and the NNPG acknowledged the covenant of reconciliation signed on June 13, 2009 and committed to move forward through dialogue. He expressed their appreciation of the assembly to all stakeholders, leaders and representatives of civil society and tribal hohos and individuals and organizations who participated in the consultative meeting and collectively supported the common endeavor of pursuing permanent peace. I rise to participate in this special discussion on a matter of modern public importance on the topic of Naga political issue. Sir, you are aware, every assembly session everybody take keen interest and used to mention, debate and discuss on Naga political issue. As a leader of this house, I extend my position to the Honorable Speaker for giving the opportunity for this discussion today also. And also to my Honorable Colleague, Sri Katie Sukhalu. Advisor for School Education and SCRT Katie Sukhalu mentioned that the state is at a crucial stage of discussions between the negotiating parties. It is imperative to stand united at this point. He advised care with statements and utterance and called for a united voice for an early settlement of the Naga political issue. Leadership of the Honorable Chief Minister, all the Honorable Members of the 13th Legislative Assembly have come together for actively facilitating the early settlement of the protracted Naga political issue. There are no two opinions for an honorable, inclusive and acceptable early settlement of the Naga political issue. The Parliament Committee on the Naga political issue in its meeting held on the 16th of July 2022 appreciated and welcomed the positive initiatives taken by the Government of India and the working group of the NNPGs. The Parliamentary Committee also welcomed the statements made by various organizations calling for unity and early solution. The Parliamentary Committee had appealed to the negotiating parties to refer the, con the competencies. Deputy Chief Minister Y. Patton today confirmed to Hornbill TV that the seat sharing between the Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party and the Partha Janata Party on 40 to 20 by 20 has already decided. However, he also said that there is still time and hoping for the best. 2020. Okay. So, still time is there. There is hope for the best. All right. And sir, about uh, Frontier and Angolan as well. Sir, so, so there many unions and all have decided. No, I have no comment on that. Our home minister, he is going to meet them on October 15, 16. Okay. Uh, in view of the state. Sir, on the conversation of the board, you said that uh, Sanjay is ready to incorporate India constitution like a constitution. What are the modalities? Modalities? Uh, it depends on the competency because they will have they will work under this competency framework agreement competency. Chief Minister Nipuri, while talking to Hornwell TV at the sideline of Nagaland Legislative Assembly today, said that the government of India's intention is sincere regarding solution before election. Rio said the sooner the better as government of India is very clear on the issue. Also commenting on the foothill road construction, the chief minister said that funds that have been given cannot complete the construction and added that the government will pursue so that it is completed soon and would be declared national highway. At the same time, we will pursue 
will be a more key hit yes, huh? mm -hmm. to give so that make the vehicle pliable because they are, there is no road and without road they cannot declare additional highway. Deep long road. Mm -hmm. So we'll make it uh, pliable and slowly we'll do first phase maybe from uh, New Land, the Mogwar New Land and to the Young Bridge. That will be pliable. Okay. And from Tuli, Naganimara, Tuli. Mm -hmm. uh, so in between, the, uh, there are three phases. So we'll take up the sooner the better. Government of India also very clear. But it is because of a certain contentious issue not being resolved. And now negotiation is going on. Yesterday, today, even tomorrow they are going to be. The leader of the Naga People's Front Legislature Party leader Kuzuli Zunina today told the Nagaland Legislative Assembly that the issue of illegal immigrants, especially Bangladesh nationals, is a matter to be taken seriously. The Mapur, the metropolitan district of Nagaland, is becoming a breeding ground for illegal Bangladeshi nationals and they are a growing threat to the Naga people the legislator want. It is going to cost the state's upcoming generation very dearly, Nina warned during a questionnaire on the inner line permit registration and renewal. The NLA was warned that if the state does not tackle this issue with seriousness and with an iron hand, Nagaland will become the second Tripura. Uh, this caught my attention in the month of uh, June 24 newspaper. Clippings. In June 2021, a total number of 2,36,452 ILPs were registered and 1,40,956 were renewed in the year 2021. Where there was brief lockdown, and when there was brief lockdown, people were restricted our LP registration had shot up to this level. So this caught my attention and I had put this question. Now looking at the answer, Mr. Speaker, sir, I am so happy and satisfied with the department because now within nine months time, we have only issued around 17,000 plus ILPs and the MLA also reminded how non-local people marry into a local family and soon takes advantage of it by purchasing land under their spouse's name, establishing business under the name. This way, they have started to dominate everything, he said. In reply, Deputy Chief Minister and Home Minister Yantongo Patton stated that the total number of ILP registration issued in all the authorized offices with effect from January 1st, 2022 till date stands 11,718. Kuzuluzun Nina, leader of the NPF Legislature Party, has called for formulation of an act against medical negligence in Nagaland. During discussions on medical negligence in the state during the Nagaland Legislative Assembly session in Kohima, he said medical negligence and malpractices are noticeable in Nagaland. Nina has emphasized on the need to pass the Medical Negligence Act in Nagaland considering the fact that negligence and malpractices have been noticeable in the state. He urged the Assembly to pass a Nagaland Medical Negligence Bill in order to check medical negligence and malpractices and restore the lost trust and respect for the noble profession besides also providing the best possible health care services in the state. I raise to initiate the discussion on matters of urgent public importance under Rule 50. There has been a lot of medical negligence report throughout the state. And therefore, I have initiated this discussion in order to create awareness to the government, department, health, family health and health department, including doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers, that if any steps or measures can be taken up to protect the interests of the common man and the patients by and large. 
Mr. Speaker, sir. Minister for Health and Family Welfare Pang Nyo Pom said doctors regulate their conduct through do a code of ethics which are enforced by the self-regulatory body, the Nagaland Medical Council. Pang Nyo also said that there are other legal options also available to aggrieved patients. In Nagaland is with all of us because we did not pass. We don't go to hospitals and untie. We don't go for chicken. Only at the last stage, we the not us, patient go to the hospital. Example, during COVID pandemic, but many precious life we have lost. I'm aware many of the <coughs> victims, they have not vaccinated. Government is the government, and the central government, and the department have given the best effort. Minister Yolo Konyak and Emile Dr. Ngang Shi also expressed concerns regarding the issue of medical negligence in the state. The 12th session of 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly has taken a unanimous decision to pursue construction of the long-awaited Foothill Road funded by the Northeastern Council. This came after MLA M. Kong L. M. Chen called attention to the matter of Foothill Road construction on the floor of the House today, September 22nd. Work order was issued on December 2013 and construction started on a war footing, but over the years, the road has still not yet been completed, M. Chen said. Almost 80% of the state's population is expected to commute on this important road once its construction is complete, he said. Very conceived for the construction of the Fortil Road was conceived at that point of time. <coughs> Luckily, today also you are here in the capacity of the Chief Minister and leader of the House. Even though I feel, Speaker Sir, <coughs> you more already could not make sufficient. Uh, Allocation of fund. I was thinking with the honorable cabinet under the chairmanship of the chief minister. We like to take a decision to with all other individuals' uh, problems being put up to the NEC for this year, 2022 or 2023. Chief Minister Nipurio stated that the matter on construction of Foothill Road has been taken up on several occasions with the central government. Rio said that the Foothill Road will facilitate economic activities and called for its early construction. Many years, this Foothill Road was demanded. I recollect. When I was PWD Minister, Works and Housing, in 1993, I took the permission of the Lord of the Chief Minister and I had pursued and I raised this issue in the NECVT at Itanagar. Honorable Chief Minister could not attend the NEC meeting I was sent. And I raised this issue. But at that time, because of our border issue, Assam raised objection and it could not be implemented. Now that 
we have a more friendly government and also we are trying to build this foothill road inside Nagaland except some portion but though disputed area land occupied by Nagas and their villages that's how we have taken up with the MRTH and on several occasions we have taken this I have written to Honorable Prime Minister also and discussed with him and even jointly I remember the department, myself, the Deputy Chief Minister and some of us we met the Minister in Charge meeting Tatkari and he told us that the National Highway Declaration is in the hand of Honorable Prime Minister and that is awaited. So we requested that while we are waiting for that, why not you sanction under any head? Then I propose that the Aosinden called for a press conference on September 22nd in Mokokchong concerning the NH702D and uh, ultimatum served by the organization to the construction company. The president of the Aosinden, Chubawati Longchar, informed that the organization had served an ultimatum to Trident Company on September 12th to immediately restore the route NH702D Mariani to Mokokchong and to make it motorable by September 20. Marani do Pukchong Rasta Laga Ao Sendam Mora Rasta Contractor Mora Thik Time De Kaam Chumma Mora Karne 12 September 2022 De Aljimedan Mekta Start Kuro Lagi Che Aro Ito 20 September Tak Te Rasta Do Thik Tak Ho Lagi इधर बुराना है कुछ उनके लिए अमिगंग की उन अमिगंग की कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन तो बोले ऐसे ही तो दो बहुत बड़ा लगा अमिगंग मीटिंग तो बोलता बढ़िया ना ठीक है अच्छी बड़ा लगा ना अमिगंग लगा आओ इरिया दे बहुत सुंदर सिद्ध दे लोगों लोगों स्पीडर लगा कुन भी अमिगंग नीते इंटरटेन हो कुन तो रास्ता दे वाली होगी कुन तो कंस्ट्रक्शन की लगा वाली होगी कोई पोर्च खोली होगी लोगे स्पीडर इधो इधो अमिगन एकदम इधो एक्सेप्ट नंबर वन नंबर वन नंबर टू कुन कंट्रैक्टर आसे ताय कुन बाईशे कुन उलाईशे टेंडर दे ताय करी बोल सॉफ्ट लाइट यूज़ नंबर वो एक जोड़ा एक जोड़े की वो एक जोड़ा एक the Aosindan president said to have visited the site three times since the organization served the ultimatum. The organization has seen the condition of the road and the quality of the work and seen the real work and it is not satisfactory at all, the president said. The Aosindan has granted a grace period of 20 more days, that is September 22nd to October 10, to the authority in concern to restore and make the road motorable, the organization's leader said. The Aosindan said it will not allow subletting of contract works to other parties by the contract holder. The organization also stated that a system of approving contracts to lowest bidder in a tender call by the issuing agency or authority will not be entertained in Mokokchung district. These decisions have been made so that the quality of contract works is not compromised and better works are carried out, the Aosindan said. If the company does not fulfill the demands of the people, the Aosindan will whatever power it has will take an own course of action, the Aosindan stated.
Six tribal communities protested in front of the Janata Bhavan in Dispur in Assam on Thursday against the centre, accusing them of overlooking, the, overlooking them while granting scheduled tribe status to communities from five other states. <laughs> Protesters tried to gear out the state secretary in Dispur. They had reached from different parts of Assam demanding ST status to the communities. Following the protest, the police forces have been deployed in large number to control the crowd. The police forces have been asked to stop representatives of Jagna Koshti, Okia Mancha, which represents six tribes of the state, from entering Dispur. <laughs> Pirate Puebla Sestan, Poribo, Amar Sodonogusti, the Utkomons of Hongami, Hongame, Karu Rogasu of Honoka, Amar Hongami, Ubata, I think, Jetelek, Sodonogusti, another Ami, Napam, Nanata Tikoran, Amar Hangitani, Kodotorika, Mazonosotorika, Vorega Yakami, Adai, Poribo, Noaneke, Ami Hongam of Bagra, Barota <laughs> On September 19, six communities in Assam threatened to launch a coordinated agitation against the inordinate delay in granting them ST status. They had also said that they would not engage in any discussions convened by the government. The state government had invited them for talks on September 21, but the Okia Mancha announced a massive protest at Janata Bhavan on September 22. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.